Hi there, I'm Michael Fudge. Are you ready for some hints, tips, and tricks on this week's homework? I hope so, because it's time for homework advice. Hi, welcome to homework advice for our very first homework, homework one. This homework involves us making a Mad Lib, and a Mad Lib is a story that gets generated from a series of inputs. In this case, we I would like you to make a story with five inputs, and you should have at least two sentences, and it should be your own story, and it should make sense. It shouldn't be just drivel. Okay. If you've never done a Mad Lib before, uh, I can go to one of these links here and show you what it looks like. Uh, let's go here, and I enter a noun, like I might enter, I don't know, pig, and then a noun plural, fish, and then another noun, I don't know, house, and then a place, um, Syracuse, and then an adjective, slow, and then a noun, um, dog, I don't know. And then let's see what we get for our story. One, two, three, four, five, six inputs. By the way, I'll zoom it in. Six inputs. And now my story is be kind to your pig-footed fish for a duck may somebody's house. Be kind to your fish in Syracuse where the weather is always slow. You may think that it is the dog. Well, it is. Okay, well, you know, not a, not a really funny story, but it's you get the gist of how to do this, right? So let's go ahead and give you some strategies and advice for how to approach this problem. Now, normally what we will do in, in the homework advice is I won't do the homework with you. I will give you a significant amount of advice so that you can figure out how to do it yourself. That is ultimately the point of the homework advice sessions. So first and foremost, one of the things that we learned in our small group was about working backwards through a problem. This is a great example of a uh, problem solving something where you might want to work backwards. So one way you can work backwards is come up with your story and then break it out into the pieces that you want. So I'm going to do that. I am going to write my story. Um, I'm going to put it under outputs. And this will be an example of my story. My story, I'm just going to whip something up off the top of my head. I'm going to say, Tommy is a surfer. He likes the water and goes every Tuesday for fun. Okay? That's my story. I love to use air quotes. It's my story. Okay? Uh, now, let's work backwards, right? If I wrote a program that just did this, if I just look, go down here into my solution, and I'm just going to print this, right? This is the world's most boring program. It has no inputs, right? So I run this, and it just gives me a story. It's like, boring. <laughs> Nobody likes this, right? But you now have something that you can work back from. So the way we work back from this is we need to come up with five inputs. So which things do we want to let people change in our story? Those might be considered ways that we can create inputs. Like maybe it's a, a, the name of the person, right? So I might say, mm, let's add um, name and then let's say input, enter your name, right? And then I don't want to just always print Tommy. I want to print whatever you type for the name, right? So let me run it first like this. Enter your name, Mike, and it says Tommy is a surfer. surfer. Nah, 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 right? We want it to say Mike. So let's use our friend the F string. Let's put our F here, and then let's interpolate. Name, right? So we want the value of the variable name to go here. Then we run, enter your name, George. George is a surfer. See that now this is been manipulated based on the inputs. So that should give you some strategy as to how to go about doing this. Ultimately, you need five inputs. 
So up here, you know, one of my inputs now is name. And this should be the name of a person like Mike, right? And then I can go ahead and figure out the rest of the inputs. Now I can go back down to my story and maybe I don't want surfer. Maybe I want to say, enter a sport, you know, like football player or surfer, right? And I can guide them as to what I want. I don't want them to enter a sport like basketball. You know, I want to say, enter a sport that people play. What do you call a sport that people play, right? So it's a basketball player. And then it, it, when they input that, it would say, George is a basketball player. And so that would just be another input that I would have to add to my program. See, it's kind of hard to just come up with this stuff up here without writing a little code there. So your, you know, it says part one up here and it says part two down here. But honestly, you'll be doing a lot of back and forth as you figure things out, right? And then ultimately, you'll get to a point where you know exactly what to do up here. Like I'll say name, and then I'll say sport, and then, you know, what type of athlete are you? Example, surfer. You know, and then that, since then we just put, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bocce player. Right. And then you could say Giuseppe is a bocce player. Right. And then down here, you know, you could say your output is not this. It's just going to say I output, you know, the story based on these inputs. And you could maybe even say, like, this is where the name goes. Right. It could be a little python -y. And then down here in the algorithm, you, you explain the steps. Right. Step one input, you know, step one input name. Step two input sport. This is plain old English. It's not Python. Okay. You probably don't need to write an algorithm for this assignment or the next assignment or the next assignment, but that's not the point. The point is to get you to practice doing this for when you do need to learn about writing algorithms because you won't be able to figure out and you'll need to sort of exercise your mind and practice. So we are trying to get you into good habits now so that later on you'll be more successful. That's why you write the algorithm. And then maybe the last thing is then we output, you know, the story. Right. So that's, that's basically it. You're going to come up with your five inputs and then use that F string and interpolate it to get your output. That is your lab hint. I'm sorry. That is your homework hint. And I hope it does you well. So good luck on finishing and completing completing your homework. Again, make sure that you um, fill in these inputs and algorithm and then come down here and code, code your solution in here. And then when you're done, uh, answer the questions and write your reflection. What did you learn this week? Um, what did you struggle with? How, what did you think of the exercise? You know, uh, was this video helpful? Those are all things we need to know so that we can make you, um, help you improve as a learner. And then number two, also improve the course for the next cohort of learners uh, beyond you. Okay, that's it for homework advice. We'll see you next time. Bye now.